supports me. Yeah. He carried me from one place to another. Yeah. He carried in my mind. He transmits at large what he's about to do. I have visible characteristics. I bear scars. I have the quality to exemplify a thousand different shapes. Then number seven says that after all that I've been through, it says to carry oneself in a specified manner. Which means, after all I've been through, yeah. I make the decision yeah. to carry myself yeah. in a specified manner. Yeah. To let the devil know I'm still here. Yeah. And what you thought was gonna harm me, God made it for my good. Yeah. And so instead of me hanging my head down, you qualified me, devil. Don't let hear me. You gave me a greater anointing. Now, to walk in a specified manner. How does he command us to walk? He said, walk in the spirit. That you not do mind the things of the flesh. That means in the midst of where I am, I got power to walk in the spirit. I can speak those things which be not as though they were because my scars prove it how did you how did you get there how did you get there how did you get there I just want to be Bishop I just let me carry your briefcase so I can get get, get the anointing that you got how you get I just want your level Thousand different shapes. Who shakes? He said, he said, in the last hour, he told me this the other day. I owner, he said, protect what you have and don't just freely give it to people who want to carry your briefcase and walk with you and they want what God's got on your life tell them a thousand different ways go somewhere and suffer go somewhere and die come back and show me some scars and then I know that you're qualified and you have the capacity to hold what I'm about to pour in your spirit you want me to pour something in your flesh and you ain't never been poured out oh God I'm not hearing nobody God I wish I had a church I gotta close. 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 I gotta close cause, cause, cause he said, don't nobody move. Let me just, let me just, let me say this. Faith, faith, faith in God. Hebrews 11 chapter goes through everybody. Elijah called him fire from heaven. Moses, everybody. But I didn't get a deposit, a real one, until yes. I got to the back of the scripture. Because yes. I really hadn't heard nobody really preach. Matter of fact, just call this message the second half of faith. Yes. Never heard nobody preach that part. Yes. I've been hollering about suffering and transmitting power a thousand different ways. Well, how does that relate to real faith? Dr. Locke, I, did, I didn't hear. It wasn't even marked in my Bible. I was laying on the threshing floor and I was going through some things in the ministry. And he said, read Hebrews 11. I read Hebrews 11 chapter and I got up and I preached about the 23rd chapter. Talk about prompted by faith, motivated by faith, urged by faith, instituted by faith. And I preached the five steps of divine faith. And it was powerful. It was anointed. It was informative. It was helpful. Yes. But he said, I want you to preach the end of faith. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. 
Because people preach, they preach faith. But he said, I need, I need you to echo this in the atmosphere. And I need you to echo it so that other preachers can start seeking it out and preaching it. It ain't my message. It's something he wants me to deliver in the atmosphere for other preachers in here to, 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 to begin to preach this. He said, in the 36th verse, it says, others. It says, some women received again their dead by the resurrection. Others were tortured to death with clubs, refusing to accept release offered on the terms of denying their faith so that they might be resurrected to a better life. Others had to suffer the trial of mocking and scourging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were lured with tempting offers to renounce their faith. They were sawn asunder. They were slaughtered by the sword while they were alive. They had to go about wrapped in the skins of sheep and goats, utterly destitute, oppressed, cruelly treated. Men of whom the world was not worthy, roaming over the desolate places and the mountains. And listen to this, not living in Mercedes and dri we're driving Mercedes and living in mansions. But it says living in caves and caverns and holes of the earth. And all of these, though they won divine approval by means of their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us. What did this mean? This means that faith in God is not the kill. It's not believing God for the house and then I get it and I got faith. Faith in God is believing God for the house and he don't give it to me, but I still believe God. Faith in God says that some of our, baby, our assignments of faith, we all done jumped in one assignment. We done jumped in Kenneth Copeland's them assignment. We done got over in Dwight Thompson's assignment. Some of our assignment would not be wealth. Some of our faith assignments would be to live in the projects and hold up the banner of God and declare him to be your God if he don't never bring you out the projects. See, I wonder if the church don't start teaching the real faith, then after a while, when the Mercedes don't come, these folk leaving God. If they don't get a car, they gonna leave God. If they die with the sickness, the Bible said they didn't receive the promise. Some of us give up on everything. Noah had to wait over 120 years before he saw it come to pass. And if it don't happen for us tomorrow, we wanna leave God. But how about this? How about God ain't gonna never give some of us some of the stuff that we asking for, but he is still requiring that our spirits proclaim him as still being the God that can and will. Where's the church? Where's the church? The three Hebrew boys said, throw us in. And if he don't deliver us, we're going to take our last breath saying he God. Where is everybody? Where is everybody? Well, you God, if you strip me down to nothing, you God, if I die with this cancer, you God. And the greatest level of my testimony is to weigh the world out of here, yes. still declaring. Yes. 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 So baby, baby, come on now. That's some, what? that's faith in God. I'm going to make a statement right here that's going, that's going, that's going, you're going to have to go home and think about this. Faith in God is just as much as getting it as it is not getting it. 
not getting it is still faith in God. Yes. Yes. I'm hearing you. Not receiving it. Yes. Empowers me to a greater level than the one that have received it. Because now I've proven to him that I'm able to function beyond the point of receiving it. I'm now functioning in the realm of existing in him. I'm beyond, I gotta have it. And I've moved over into, I'd rather walk in it than to have it. When I have not received it, I am operating in a greater level of power. Because let me help you with something. When I believe God, let me tell you the trick. When I believe God, and I keep believing God, and he don't give me, the, throw me that briefcase. And he don't give me this. The reason why the enemy want me to stop believing God when I don't get this. Because as long as my spirit is believing him. Other things I am accomplishing in the spirit. As long as I am believing. I didn't get the car. But some other stuff is happening and that's why he want to use a car to discourage me because he know that if my spirit stay in faith there's stuff happening in my spirit for my family and for my finances and for my ministry that I cannot see I put my spirit in my future as long as I hold on to faith because faith is futuristic. That's why he want to kill your faith if they lose your house and the devil want to kill your faith if they repossess your car because he knew if he kill your faith at a car, at a house, he's killed your future. With my last breath, I want to, I asked him for that, I said, I, and it, 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 it gets hard, and I can keep hearing him transmitting my mind. He said, I'm trying to put you in a realm of it ain't never happened before. I said, okay, what you doing? So he said, I want you to go to Africa. And I go to Kenya. And we get to Kenya. 750,000 plus people show up. And the bishop gets up and say, this has never happened before. Yes, yes. And I shouted in the atmosphere, bishop, and I told those people in Kenya, I didn't come here to give you no money, no food, nothing. I came to get the God of Africa. I want that God that y'all believe in, that you don't know what you're going to sleep and you don't know what you're going to eat and you got AIDS in your body, but I got to make you stop praising God and you've walked for three days to get to the meetings and you won't stop shouting. I want that kind of God that in my lack thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I wish I had somebody to praise him right there that in my lack I still love him I may not have everything I need and it may not all be walking out the way I wanted to but I still praise him I may not can see my way but every chance I get I still magnify him and still call him God I still reach for him a lot of stuff I don't understand but he don't have to explain it to me I'm willing to walk blind because I trust him God I feel the
the Holy Ghost in this place. That's what real faith is. Real faith is trusting him when you can't trace him. Real faith is understanding that he knows the way that I take. And when he's tried me, I'm coming out of this. Not the way I want to come out. But his, oh God, his intention is not to bring me out with what I want. His intention is to bring me out in his will. intention bring me those prayer shocks I was walking out of the threshing floor this morning I slept on the floor I stayed in the prayer room all night my threshing floor is almost about as big as this pulpit There's prayer shawls all over it all night I could not, I did not sleep. I put on my white robe and I, because I don't like to go nowhere I'm preaching, I ain't touch God. And I walked the floor, round and round, round and round. And I was leaving this morning to come off the floor. And I went to walk out of the threshing floor room. And the Holy Ghost said, turn around and go back. He said, pull three prayer shawls off the floor. He said, because you're walking into that place to mantle the faith that this has never happened before. Out of the box is what you're about to do. Stuff that's out of the box. Stuff that's even out of character for what they would classify as a bishop. But God said, if you dare, he call you son, you will walk in your last days greater than your beginnings. <laughs> 